Welcome, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Today, we're going to talk about the 12 days of Christmas adjusted for inflation. <laughs> of course, you knew we would have to do that. We have to adjust for inflation, even when it comes to turtle doves and all of the 12 days, right? So we're going to go through it, and we're going to adjust that for inflation. Now, every year, PNC Bank publishes the 12 days of Christmas or the Christmas price index. And I did it last year. And of course, last year was a really weird year because of the Cervasa sickness. Think about that. If you don't know what I mean by it, just relate it to a famous Mexican beer <laughs> named Corona, right? That's the hint. So they really skipped some of the statistics but we can still compare them to 2019 and learn what is going on in the economy. So we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, how you can win through inflation with inflation-induced debt destruction. I know it's a mouthful. I've been teaching this strategy for 17 or 18 years, and it has been an incredible wealth creator. It's really the hidden wealth creator when it comes to income property. You've probably heard me talk about it before if you follow my work, but we'll touch on it today, but we're going to relate it to the holidays, to the 12 days of Christmas. We're going to talk about how you can effectively short the dollar which is probably the thing that most needs to be shorted. I know people short stocks, they fight with the Reddit group and the meme stocks and AMC and Hertz and all these other companies, right? And that's, that's been a famous theme of this year, these meme stocks. It's been really interesting to watch. I have not participated. I'm, I don't know if I should say I'm happy to say that or sad to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends where you are. But that's just way too speculative for me. I'm just too darn conservative for that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I'm not into gambling, but I am into shorting what really, uh, you know, I think it's hard to argue that shorting the dollar would not be a good idea. Okay, anyway, you got these two big spenders running things, and that is, of course, Joe Biden and his accomplice, his partner in crime, Janet Yellen, our Treasury Secretary, and then they've got Jerome Powell working with them as well. So it's it's all just a scam. Everything has become a scam nowadays. It really, really has. But the question is, how do we deal with it? And the way we deal with the scam is by aligning our interest with the most powerful forces the human race has ever known. And those forces, of course, are governments and central banks. And we are going to not beat them at their game, but we're going to ride along with them. We're going to use what they're doing for our benefit. We're going to follow the exact same business plan that they're following that is impoverishing most people. It is oppressing people. It is literally stealing their savings, their the value of their stocks, their bonds, and their equity in real estate even. It is a theft. Inflation is a pickpocket. It's a thief. And so the question is, how can we make the thief work for us? I think back to the time that I used to take judo, right? And then Aikido, two martial arts. And different martial arts, forms of martial arts, which by the way, what's really interesting about that is that do you know that the martial arts, when I, when I was taking karate, I learned this. I, I did not learn it in the days of judo and Aikido. So, you know, don't mess with me. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, probably uh, not that great at that stuff, but I'm okay. I, can, I, I, I grew up in a tough neighborhood and a, a tough side of town in Los Angeles. So I know how to kind of hold my own. But anyway, you know, one of the things that they teach you about judo and Aikido is that you don't have to be big. You don't have to be heavy, right? Generally, when you're heavy, you have an advantage because you can put more weight behind a punch or you have more weight to use with leverage in a throw, right? And what they teach you in both judo and aikido is how to use your opponent's weight and your opponent's force against them, right? How to redirect their energy 
So you're not dependent on only your own energy and your own weight, right? Another thing that's important when it comes to fighting is literally arm length, right? The length of your arms is a, is a big differentiator in who, who's going to have an advantage or a handicap in a fight, right? So, you know, if you have longer arms and you're both punching at the same time, well, hey, the person with a longer arm is going to get their punch through and you might not get yours through. So you have to learn how to compensate for all these things. And that's what the martial arts do. But what I was going to tell you that I found to be really interesting when I was taking karate lessons is that the way they invented martial arts is by watching cats, especially big cats and other wild animals and the way they would play and the way they would fight. And it was just amazing to see you know, how nimble they are. I know we're all impressed by that, especially cats more than dogs, but dogs pretty incredible too. Any wild animal, you know, even the domesticated ones are pretty incredible fighters. They're very good at using their balance, their body, their weight, and their opponent's weight against them, right? You've seen them play and roll around or maybe fight. And, you know, of course, there's tons of great videos on YouTube about this, and I enjoy watching a lot of those, frankly. They're, they're very interesting. And so that's what we want to do. That's our strategy as investors. Let's use the weight, the force, and the business plan, the strategy against our opponent, if you will. And the central bank, the government, is our opponent because they are engaged in a practice that is going to impoverish us unless we learn how to use their force, maybe not against them, but at least right on their coattails, right? That's what we've got to do. So when we look at inflation, which is what the PNC Christmas price index, their CPI, Christmas price index, you get it? <laughs> not consumer price index, is all about. And so they've been doing this for 38 years. And uh, again, last year we reviewed it, but this year we've had inflation has been in the news. That's been a big deal, right? It's definitely been in the news. And so we would be very remiss if we didn't talk about this. And this will be, we have Flashback Friday coming up on Friday, of course, which will be a great repeat. That's where we play an old show again. But this is our last actual live show before Christmas. So I thought it was the perfect day to go over it. All right. So let's take a look at this in the context <laughs> of the 12 days of Christmas. And by the way, please comment below with any questions or comments, but also let us know where you're located. We'd love to know where you're watching from and comment below and please hit the like button and make sure you're a subscriber because I notice I have a lot of people watching my videos on YouTube who aren't subscribed. So we, you know, we can tell, we can tell if you're a subscriber or not. So just make sure you don't miss anything. All right. So what we're doing here is we're comparing the 2019 data. So there's kind of an adjustment because last year was such a weird year, right? So the Christmas price index this year to pay for the 12 days of Christmas will cost you just over $41,000. And that's a 5.7% increase. Now, this is a good example of how we all have a different inflation rate. Because interestingly, the 12 days of Christmas has not inflated as much as the consumer price index. So the Christmas price index is actually not as bad as the consumer price index. Okay, that's pretty great, right? That's, that's, that's good. Uh, only problem with that is most people aren't really, um, you know, that in need of a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Right. So our partridge in a pear tree is now two hundred twenty two dollars and sixty eight cents. And it's gone up six percent since last year. Well, real inflation, according to the well, not real inflation, but the official inflation rate is just over seven percent. And the real inflation rate, I would argue, is pretty easily 15 percent for most people. And of course, it varies. It differs because everybody has a different spending pattern. So we all have our own personal inflation rate, just like the Christmas price index is different from the consumer price index. All right, let's go to the next one. So the partridge in a pear tree is up. Number two, two turtle doves, right? I'm not going to attempt to sing because I really, I really want you to keep watching. <laughs> okay. 
450 bucks up 50 percent wow okay we need sound effects for that one that is absolutely shocking up 50 percent so those turtle doves have gotten very expensive what about the french hens we need three french hens and that's up 40.5 percent four calling birds though thankfully are the same no inflation in four calling birds. So we're pretty good there. <laughs> All right. How about five golden rings? Okay, 895 bucks up 8.5%. Six geese a laying. Wow, this is the worst of all of them. This is now $660 up 57.1%. Can you imagine if overall inflation, if the consumer price index was to hit 50% or, or something like this. This is 57%. The volatile birds trend for 2021 continues with six geese a laying. They jumped in price by more than 57% this year, the highest increase of any gift in the index. So if you can find a way to skip the gift giving on day six, Hopefully your true love will forgive you. <laughs> okay. Because the six geese are laying have really inflated a lot. How about seven swans of swimming? Well, no inflation. The swans are the same price as before. Zero inflation. But they are expensive. Seven swans are over $13,000. I'm amazed. It's pretty expensive. Okay. Eight maids of milking, 58 bucks. Okay, no change at all. Now, <laughs> what, how do they figure this? You can't really buy eight maids, right? You, you know, because that's illegal to buy people, but you can hire them. Okay, and there's been no change in the federal minimum wage, therefore, no change in the price of hiring the eight maids to do your milking. Okay, there we go, $58. All right, so nine ladies dancing. Again, same idea. No inflation there. That'll cost you 7,500 bucks. 10 lords of leaping. Now, apparently the 10 lords have inflated. And I wonder why that's different from the eight maids of milking or the nine ladies dancing. Hmm, let's see. The lords are leaping. <laughs> <laughs> for joy, rising almost 13% in 2021 from 2019 and passed due to increased wages. The lords of leaping are glad stepping their own way into the Christmas price index. Now, I really wonder why. Why did they do that differently than the nine ladies dancing or the eight maids milking? There was probably a judgment call there, just like there is in the federal consumer price index right? The government index is also a moving target. It's not the same. And it really started being heavily manipulated back in the late 70s and the early 80s, because that's where inflation was just getting really, really out of hand. So they started manipulating the index very, very heavily at that time. And I did a podcast. I had a spot from Tom Keen on the economy. You hear him on Bloomberg. He's fantastic. And we really did a deep dive into how that index was so, so manipulated in the late 70s and the early 80s so that they could hide inflation, so they could suppress real inflation and pull the wool over our eyes and really scam us. Okay. So that definitely happened, but it's always being manipulated on an ongoing basis through the three major ways, weighting, substitution, and hedonic indexing, the three major ways the index is manipulated. And that's the problem when you have an index that is a committee, right? That's a, a judgment call. That's a bunch of people that just simply get together and decide how they're going to calculate the index rather than having the index be consistent. If the index just had, look, this is our basket of goods, and this is the things, for example, in the Christmas price index, we got the 12 things, right? But in the CPI, we've got another basket of goods and services. And so if we just said, it's going to be the same, so we know what we're dealing with, we could compare apples to apples over time, and we could know exactly what's happening. But of course, they don't want us to know what's happening. They want to hide the truth from us. 
And this is the big scam with the consumer price index. And then it's adjusted even further because they do what they call the core rate or core inflation in the index. And the core rate strips out the two things that they say are just too volatile, these two things, food and energy. And I don't know about you, but, well, I do know about you because I know that none of us can survive without food and energy. The cost of energy is in literally every single good and service produced in the economy. And of course, we all need to eat. So food and energy stripped out because they say they're too volatile. So they quote core inflation or the core rate. And that's even lower than the CPI, the consumer price index, which is heavily manipulated. So the real rate is absolutely, you know, double to maybe even two and a half times what the official number is in my estimation. All right. So back to this index here. So we got nine ladies dancing, no inflation, according to PNC, 10 Lords up almost 13%. How about the 11 Pipers piping? Okay. They went up by 7.1%. And the return of live music performance may well be worth it to your true love. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Even if that has inflated, it's about the same as the official fake, hashtag fake inflation rate by the CPI. And so it's it's just kept up with, with the stated inflation rate. Okay, what about 12 drummers drumming up 7.1%? Uh, that's now $3,183. And there you go. The true cost of Christmas in song, $179,000. That represents the total cost of all the gifts bestowed by True Love when you count each repetition in the song. Okay, so what they did there is, you know how the song repeats and it goes back and recites all the previous ones that it it mentioned, right? And that's what makes the song so fun, right? But that's that's the cost when you combine them all, right? And then here, excluding the swans, because this is the core index, right? They did the same thing that the consumer price index does to us. I told you about core inflation and the core rate. Well, they said that the swans need to come out of the core rate, right? Or the core Christmas price index, their, their CPI, right? So this version of the CPI removes the most unpredictable gift from the index the swans are swimming, <laughs> okay? And that means that the overall index is up only 8.6%, $28,000. But remember at the beginning, the whole index, $41,000, okay? So there you go. All right, now this is interesting too. You can look at the index year by year. Remember they skipped 2020 because, well, everything was shut down and so you couldn't really do the index properly then. But here's the index over the years. And you really see how much higher, even though this is not real inflation because none of us are buying any of this stuff, right? I mean, how many of you bought any of the 12 days of Christmas items in your life in the past year or maybe ever, right? I don't think I've ever purchased any of these things, right? <laughs> so, But you can just see how low the inflation rate was in these things until we go back to 2013. Then it was pretty high. And just looking here over the years, you know, pretty low, 2008, 11%, very expensive then. And that's interesting that these years were during and after the Great Recession. So it shows you how everything's not in lockstep, right? You can have significant uh, deflation in assets while you can have consumer price inflation. That's very important. Let's repeat that. There is a difference between consumer price inflation and asset inflation. Big difference sometimes, not always, but sometimes in the economy, you'll notice there is a big, big difference between that. Okay, we got a bunch of comments and questions here. Let me just take some of those. And I want to get to this chart because this chart is fascinating and it's interactive. Look at this. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a moment. All right, but let's just see if we can grab a couple of these questions here or comments. Okay, a lot of people saying Merry Christmas. Thank you, Ramin, Maribel. Thank you so much. And Power Pigeon coming from Apex, North Carolina. I didn't know there was a place called Apex. Uh, that's cool. Okay, Ryan, first live chat. Uh, Merry Christmas. Oh, hey, thanks for joining us for your first live chat. It's not our first live chat. We do lots of lives. Okay, 
inflation is soaring. Okay. Inf inflation is soaring. I went shopping for the first time in a month yesterday and products were 25% plus more expensive. You know, of course it depends what you buy, but I have no trouble believing you because I went to Costco the other day and I cannot believe how, how expensive just everything is just getting so expensive. It's unbelievable. And you know, it, it doesn't hurt someone like me or maybe someone like you or a lot of our, our listeners and followers because they're investing, they've got in great inflation hedges and all this kind of stuff. But for most people, this just totally hurts them because most people are living on, you know, they're barely able to save or barely able to get by. And so they're buying the basics, the things that are really, really inflating, you know, gasoline, food, right? The, the products are soaring in price. They're not buying as much like optional stuff that you really don't need, but you want maybe. And so lots and lots of, infl of inflation. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. It's absolutely true. Okay. Tampa Electric. Okay. So this Tampa, Florida Electric uh, applied for yet another price increase. Yes. Utility inflation is rarely talked about. And you know, by the way, there's a lot of skimpflation in this as well, because of course, we do everything ourselves nowadays. You know, everything's like self-service. You got to go on the web. You got to figure out all these companies' websites. They're, they don't answer the phone anymore. There's nobody to help you. It's absolutely pathetic. Uh, you know, of course, we've been pumping our own gas for years. In the old days of a service station, you know, it used to be check your oil, your washer fluid, fill up your tires with air, and, you know, do everything for you. Wash your windows and pump the gas, too. Right. But that, that they used to call them service stations. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like there is no service station that even exists anymore. It, it's it's absolutely unbelievable. So we're doing everything ourselves. So there's a lot of skimpflation. And with utilities, I give you an example of that. Right. Utilities have inflated quite dramatically. But also think about the skimpflation aspect. You know, years ago, your trash pickup. And your sewer, a lot of, depending on where you lived, of course, but, you know, my experience was that it was just included with your property taxes. Your property taxes paid that stuff. Now you pay a separate bill, or if you're a member of a disgusting homeowners association and they've just taken over the world and they're a complete ripoff. If you're a member of an HOA, as, as am I, you know, your HOA pays for it. Maybe, maybe not. A lot of times they do. But it, it just makes these HOA bills are ridiculous. We never used to have an HOA bill or they, these HOA bills, homeowners associations used to be really, really cheap. And now they're enormously expensive. So there's just inflation everywhere and skimpflation any, everywhere. So yeah, price increase and they will get it because Florida's commission is composed of industry insiders and is incredibly corrupt. Well, listen, what governmental body isn't incredibly corrupt. That's just the way it is nowadays, unfortunately. So, yep. And Merry Christmas to you too. All right. Let me go back to it. If we got any more comments, let's get them in before we, uh, before we adjourn for the day here. Okay. So looking at this. All right. So this chart is interesting because this you can index gift by gift, right? Which is really cool. And you can go back to 1984. All right. Hmm sort of uh, interesting year, think George Orwell in 1984, which sadly is the world we're now living in. You know, he predicted all that stuff. He wrote that book, I think it was 1949. He wrote the book 1984. And when I was in high school and college, you know, people used to be reading that book. That was just an assigned reading. I, I can't imagine. You know, comment below if your kids are reading 1984 or Animal Farm in high school or college today, right? It's no way. I mean, it has become so ridiculously corrupt and pathetic. Our whole education system is just a disaster, a Marxist disaster. So I can't imagine they would have anybody read things like that that would actually encourage them to think for themselves and to question government and to question this massive censorship that is going on that is may be the worst problem the human race faces, quite literally, that the censorship is just 
incredibly scary. We, we should all be very worried about that. Okay, so here you look at the index back in 1984, it was $20,000. And you see we had a lot of inflation in the 12 days stuff here into 1994. And then it deflated for a while down to 1995. And then it started rising again, had a little deflation. That's probably the dot-com bust right there. Well, no, not really. It's 2002-ish. So kind of surprised, but it just shows you that this is a different consumer price index. And that's why all of our spending is different. So we all have our own personal inflation rate. And then it just soared and soared and soared. And then they just didn't count it in 2020. Okay, they, they really just, so you, you have to, just kind of throw that one out because it's a statistical anomaly, but now over $41,000. So that is the index for you, folks. We have so many great episodes coming up on the Creating Wealth podcast. We have Robert Breedlove talking about what is money. He's coming up. We've got the Cromford Report coming up with some really great real estate market analysis. We're going to talk about my forecast for the upcoming year in real estate and the economy in general, just all kinds of great stuff. So a whole bunch of great episodes that have already been recorded. We had Scott Shea on uh, just the other day, and I recorded that one. So that'll be aired soon, where he talked about Conspiracy U, Conspiracy University, and also about the banking system. He's chairman of a, of a bank and was a really interesting guest. So we've just got a whole bunch of great stuff coming up for you and a bunch of other great guests booked for which I have not recorded those episodes yet, but those are coming up. So it's going to be a very informative time, a lot of great stuff coming, and I think it's going to be a turbulent year next year. And remember, turbulence isn't all bad because it does create a lot of opportunity for those people in the know. Sadly, we are now living in a country and really a world, but America was maybe the last one to kind of fall, that has been for a long time a plutocracy where the elites are kind of running things and dictating things. That, that's not so new. But sadly, especially recently, it's become a kleptocracy where the elites are just taking the wealth. They're just stealing it from people. And so we want to protect you from this. We want to help you. You know, if you can't beat them, join them, align your interests with these incredibly powerful forces so that you can benefit from this wealth transfer that's going on and be protected from it. There are just a lot of absolutely crazy things going on in the world that have never before occurred. So it's time to be very diligent. It's time to be aware. It's time to be educated. It's time to be informed. It's time to form your communities and your circles of influence and network with other like-minded people. Because if things get really, really rough, you'll want to have those, those people as resources. And also, I want to remember not to totally be so negative on a pre-Christmas episode here, but I started publishing another podcast back about 12 years ago called The Holistic Survival Show. And in these crazy times we're living in, it's really important that you go and listen to some of those episodes. Most of them are just perennial, they're timeless, and they will teach you how to uh, survive crazy, turbulent times that we are now living in again. You know, I started publishing that show during the Great Recession, but it's very fitting nowadays, all those episodes on the Holistic Survival Show. So wherever you get your podcast, make sure you subscribe to the Holistic Survival Show. And of course, also this show, The Creating Wealth Show. Be sure you're subscribed to both of those. The subtitle, the tagline for the Holistic Survival Show is protecting the people, places, and profits you care about in uncertain times. And these are uncertain times. But that uncertainty, that turbulence does create a lot of opportunity for those who are aware and are willing to act. And we're going to help you capitalize on that on the positive side and how to protect yourself on the defensive side. So you need a good offense and a good defense. And that is a strategy we will continue to help you execute into the new year. But Hey, the year's not over, so we've got a whole bunch of shows next week. Uh, we've got our Flashback Friday show this coming Friday, so join us for all of those. And until then, Merry Christmas to all. Have a great holiday, and we will talk to you soon. Happy investing as well. Music